والتر نش ریشرهدو ده کورال اتماس ایگور ل ایرگرید به میسی ل دین کالول اون کومن لو کلاس گیل اگه ستا سولیگم کومنی شیف تنی باش I remember saying to him, this is some trip, Sean Murray. This is unbelievable <laughs> shit. He says, he says this, well, it's not a trip, Muggsy, it's, it's a tour. And I was like, no, but you know what I mean? He says, no, I don't. So proud there again, D&G. Hoor da, hoor da again, D&G. Dalsin Cavana. Yeah, it's L&G anyway, Larry and Galvin anyway. That's the, that's the brand name anyway. This season, the show is brought to you by Airgrid. They're the proud sponsors of the Under-20 All-Ireland Football Championship. Not only is Airgrid delivering a cleaner energy future for Ireland, they are invested in development of our most promising GA players and the managers that helped them to shine. Very welcome back to Coral at Moss uh, in association with Airgrid. I'm absolutely delighted to have Rory Began with us this week, uh, probably the most talked about man in the country, Rory, in the last uh, four or five days after your performance uh, at the weekend. We'll come to that. Uh, Rory, thanks a million for being with us. Uh, I know it's very hard, always hard, the week after a championship when you're sick, sick in the stomach. Um, I, I suppose I'll have to ask you, how are you after it? It's, it's sickening to get so far and to come up a small bit short. Yeah, it's most, I suppose, thanks for having me on, first and foremost. Um, I suppose talking about that topic, it, it, it has been a tough week. Um, you know, after the game, you know, how, how close we were. And you know how far we, we were far enough behind at half time, a couple of points behind, and and to get it back to the draw, we could never, could never really get ahead, and just to be so close at the end, you know, it's devastating just losing out by the single margin, and um, just after it, you know, that's the thing gone. You know, usually when you lose an Ulster final, you have maybe a game in the back door, but it's just do or die now in these in, in these last two years, and. You know, it was a really, really tough loss to take. You know, we're a couple of days you, what, that you usually have after a loss in championship, and then you try to get back into a bit of routine. So, it's been a uh, yeah, it's been a tough enough week, and I suppose you're only starting to really think about the game now, uh, more so from today on. And I haven't watched it back yet, but uh, I'll probably get in watching it maybe tonight or tomorrow, and, and and try to pick a few pieces out from it and learn from it. Really, but tough week. Fair play, Joe. I couldn't. Um... I'd say one thing at least we we never ever beat fucking Tyrone in championship at least yeah one day you did like but um how I I suppose it'd be Brendan Old Duffy uh, Rory it was very tough but uh, and it was very tragic and jeez uh, the whole country were mourning and it must have been very hard for ye even the performance against Armagh and the connection with Banty and all that. And the way you carried yourself, geez, I said it the last day, I thought it's been absolutely phenomenal from the very, very start. The whole county, the club, the, the communities around the area, the players, the, the 20s, his dad on television. It's been phenomenal, hasn't it? The way that everybody just grouped around and gathered around. It must have been a tough roller coaster for you for the last two weeks as well, was it? Yeah, I suppose any time you maybe opened up social media, it was, it was the topic, like everybody was talking about it. And I remember, I remember the morning... We were waking up. I woke up at six o'clock to go to the toilet, and I looked at my phone. I usually don't do it. I looked at my phone, and then a text on my phone, as someone had, had said what had happened, and I never slept a wink since it. You know, it's it's something when you're watching. You watch that fella lead his team to an Ulster final the night before on TV, and to hear that news there was devastating. Like, and and I didn't know Brendan O personally. I I knew of him through football and stuff. I wouldn't have met him, I wouldn't have spoken to him or whatever much before, but. Um, just the reaction to the tributes that everybody was coming in over the following week and week and a half, two weeks, they're still going, um, was absolutely phenomenal, and it really put into perspective how important the GA is like around around these times, and how the GA is rallied around that family, you know how tough it is in that family, and how the GA have really stood in, like the amount of people that were at that funeral. It's the biggest funeral I've ever been at. And to see, you know, the likes of the down twenties coming down was big one. They were the Donegal twenties, and the amount of GA teams, the whole club. It was, it was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm sure that that really resonated with the with the family, and and uh, you know, it, it it was a tough week for us. It was, I imagine, it was an unbearable couple of weeks for for that twenties team as well. Um, and to gather themselves up and put in that performance, to put in on Friday night, 
in the final. Like I felt so so sorry for them, but uh, you know it'd been great for them to get the win and, and really and and but I felt so sorry for them. But to gather themselves up and do that after the couple of weeks they had, it was it was absolutely phenomenal. And but it was amazing the amount of tributes that came out and and the amount of people who rallied around. Like it was it was unbelievable. It just shows how important that G, the G A is. Like. That is, it's huge. Every um every facet of the of life really uh, if you're born into the ga like it doesn't matter what happens to you throughout life good bad and different the ga is around you like isn't it, it it's, it's phenomenal like um, it's unbelievable and the, the, i suppose it was very the performance he gave and i suppose he lifted there was a kind of a focus on monaghan for the armagh game then because of what had happened and Jeez, I, I think it was. I was talking to Oshima Conville since then. He said it was surreal going in there. At the, but the football, and it's happened to myself with personal loss and, and, you know, debt and all that. The football is a small bit of escape, Rory, isn't it? In a yeah. way, like you can actually get out of your head for a while and you focus on that. And it's not disrespecting it. In fact, the way he played that day showed unbelievable respect and honour to, to the family and to, to um, the dead. And it, like, was that that was in in the minds of you going out? It must have been an emotional day for you before it and during and and trying to box it off and go out and give the performance you gave. Absolutely, absolutely. Like it hit it hit everyone hard. Um, but I thought uh, you know Seamus McNeil. I thought Banty Hell uh, you know dealt with it really really well. I know we all met up and it was on everybody's minds and you could easily have just tried to escape the topic and maybe not talk about it before the game. You know, we could easily um you could easily have done that but in fairness I remember just when we were in Eton before the game you know we just he, he stood up and you know he, he talked about it and he just says have a couple of minutes to have a couple of minutes to yourselves lads and, and have a chat to each other about it because we had we had the under 20s joined the, the 20s were joined up with us the right. couple of boys were involved in both panels so they were there so it was important that they knew that we were you know we were um thinking of them and we were we were and making sure we were looking after them and, and stuff through that tough time and I have to commemorate young Aaron Mulligan as well you know Aaron Aaron played that with the whole way up and likes of Ryan Farley and Sean Jones but Aaron was starting that day for us in our man it was really tough for him and um, you know he put in a really good performance and you know he uh, you know, just it was great to see him come through that game because he was obviously going through a lot because of that and um. I thought I thought Bandy held it really well with us, and and you know we talked about it. We didn't forget about it, and we then we we said, look, we we'll park it and and let's get through this game, and then as we said, we went back into a bit more grieving after after the game, and you know we had the, we had the, went to the house on um went to the house a couple of days after, and then the funeral and, and stuff, and and it was just you know, we needed to be there for them boys and stuff, and and um as you said, it was it was nice to get that win. You know, it was just that a small bit of yeah, just a small smile on back on a couple of people's faces. But um, it was important that we felt to get that win. You know, to just bring a wee bit of a boost back. It was huge, um, and geez, everybody was touched by everything, even the down twenties as well after. And Connor Laverty and the way he spoke to them and everything. Um, and it is sad, but he'll never be forgotten. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Come here, Rory. Moving on, and we can stay on, on, on that topic all the time. The the, the county of Monaghan and the fact that they have we we had battles with Monaghan down the years. Monaghan have been consistently, consistently in the top division all the time. From when I started playing, they have always been a tough, tough team to beat. Uh, there, there is it the third minor Munster or Ulster final now they're competing in as well. Where for a county, I don't know, is it population fifty, sixty thousand? How is it? Is it is it the way that they're organised? Is it the, just the love of the games? Is it that every child is put playing football? What is? How do they stay competitive and how do they keep bringing through the teams above there? Like, is it from the clubs, the schools? How, how do they work it? It's a football mad county. It is yeah. just football mad. It's um. Like I was involved with the coaching and games. Um, I was involved there for three three years, and the structures that were that were in place whenever I came in, and you're trying to develop those structures to make sure every kid was playing football. But you were always getting big numbers out. You were getting big numbers at camps. You were getting big numbers at development squads, and a lot of people talk about development squads and and you know is it the latest and stuff like this here. But 
you know, we always push, and I remember at the time when I was there, and I'm still involved with development squads, that we always push that your club is your is your priority, your club is, comes first. But this is an area to come here and, um, you know, prepare you for what for what is ahead because, you know, I I never got came through development squads. Not everybody who becomes a successful footballer, say Conor McManus, would have never came through development squads or county minors. It's it's not the end of the world either, but it's preparing a good a lot of players for what what lies ahead in county minor football and county twenty ones. And you know when they come up there, what what they're be- getting access to in terms of you know strength and conditioning programs, you know nutritional advice, you know all field, um, you know little bits of well being, lifestyle behaviour, all that there is is given to these guys and they're and. Um, we can see. I've seen through through the last number of years the numbers that the boys have come through that have not that, that have not dropped off, yeah. and it's just the, the sheer love of it. And I think the success of Monaghan since two thousand and thirteen and in, in a couple of Ulster finals and we won the Ulster championships and, and stuff like that. It just brought that hunger for kids to play, and I seen that firsthand with the numbers that were coming out in the initiatives ran by Paul O'Connor and everybody at, in Monaghan in Monaghan coaching and games. The work that they put in was second to none, and look, we're not spoiled by games promotion officers. You know, yeah. we're not. We don't have loads one per club or anything got there. A games promotion officer may have seven clubs to look after, but you know, a priority is that we cover the schools in that area, get, make sure they get access to, to Gaelic football, and that the clubs are being assisted whatever way it is through coach education, through just plenty of football and. In fairness to the the youth fixtures and stuff like that, there it's all in tandem. It's all making sure that everyone has an, an opportunity to play Gaelic football, and you know it's still going strong. The numbers are still big, and that that's a big part of it. Is just that we have a football mad county and kids who want to who want to play, and you know it's 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 way ahead of soccer. I think at, at this stage, you know, all the kids want to want to play Gaelic football now. It's and and hopefully that that will stay strong. Is the, is soccer is soccer the closest sport to it in Monaghan? Soccer would be, yeah, yeah. Um, there would be a good few soccer soccer teams in 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 Monaghan at the moment, and uh, rugby as well would be would be maybe not not as big, but they would be the three sports. Hurling as well. There is a good few hurling teams, and hurling is on the up as well in terms of more people participating in it. And um, but I don't think we have that problem in our county where there's a fight over players when you're playing for hurling and, and Gaelic. I think Gaelic is the is the is the dominant sport and. That's the one everybody wants to play. Do you ever? I'm just thinking there while you were saying the soccer and the rugby. You have the size for the rugby, and you obviously have the goalkeeping skills for the soccer. Did you play either? Played soccer till about. Say, played soccer till I was fourteen, and that's the reason why when I got in goals because I remember I mistakenly said to my club manager one night, "Oh, I stood in goals for a soccer game there," and he was like, "Right, right, with no goalkeeper, you stand in there." <laughs> and I ended up just that's that's where it all really started. But the rugby, no, I never grasped the love for it. I, I wouldn't watch it. Um, I keep a wee bit of an interest in maybe Ireland and Six Nations and stuff, but I, I wouldn't watch it. I remember going to a going to a rugby training one morning. It was freezing, and I didn't enjoy it. I hands were freezing. Didn't want to get on the ball. Got a bad tackle and stuff like that there. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not. No rugby. It's way way where I don't want to be. So, um. Soccer had a bit of interest in soccer when I was younger, um, but Gaelic was always the one. My father played it. Um, you know, it's not. I don't have my brothers or uncles and that there. You know, making the played loads of it, but you know, Daddy would have encouraged it a lot of me when I was younger, and I just loved watching Gaelic. And I love still love watching. Did Monaghan? Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he played. He. Uh, didn't play for long, but he did. He did play. He played in around the the eighties and that there sort of stuff, and he. Uh, He's a passionate man about Gaelic now. He probably goes overboard a wee bit whenever I'm playing and stuff. And uh, I sort of, I sort of send a tail, stand a tail, uh, stay away from him when it comes to games and stuff. But he'd, he'd be ringing me there and build up the games, looking, you know, who's this? Who's who's going to be in? Is this, this my injured or whatever? And I'd be telling him he'd, he'd be way into the pub and he'd be thinking he's 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 got the team news and stuff. Where I'd be filling them full of lies. And, <laughs> um, he looks like the eagle then when it comes to the game. I thought, oh, sure, I thought he was playing. I thought he was out. And, Sure, he now he knows now not to ask me much now, and he's. Uh, um, can I talk about the club, Rory Scottstown? You've been successful enough. Will it be straight back into the club now? And it's a competitive club championship you have above Manning, isn't it? It is, yeah. Now we've been quite successful over the last number of years. Uh, but really between us and Tibbert and Bally Bay, the last number of years. Um, but it is. It's it's very it's a very competitive championship. Uh, but I think 
we'll probably we have a game two this weekend um we'll probably be eased back into it and then I don't think we're too far away from the championship. The draw hasn't been made yet. We don't, we're not fully sure when the first round and that sort of, sort of stuff's going to be. But I think when you get a clear detail, you can really refocus the head. Um, but I think, I suppose, after a couple of days, after you, after your loss and you've you've went out of routine and you're away, you're you're going out and and I suppose uh, drowning in sorrows, as they say. Uh, you yeah. sort of come back after that and you just want to get back into routine again and get back to playing football. So we'll probably go back to training now, close to the weekend, and and get ready for for a couple of league games and then get ready for, for the championship. It's an awful place to be the few days after um, because you don't get the chance to, to write it until possibly next year, do you know, and you don't mm. get any opportunity. And then, of course, you're listening to the talk around the county and all that. But the club does give you an out in terms of your own head and keeping you busy and giving you a focus, isn't it? It's great to get back. Do you enjoy getting back to the club, lads? I know there's a couple of you inside with Monaghan, but do you enjoy getting back to the crack and the banter of the dressing room with the club? I do, I do, I really do. I love love being involved with the club setup, and any player you talk would be would be the same. I just think the lads, they're just great, great guys to be around. Like they're great trainers, and they're not afraid to have the crack when 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 they're allowed to have the crack. And um, you know, I'll go back in Thursday night, and there'll be no talking again. You know, it'll, it'll, it, people can stick in your head the week week after a loss about what happened here and what done that, and it'll just be straight into what Scott's down like us. it and be a bit of crack and a bit of slagging, but. You know, we'll go back in. I, I enjoy, enjoy being around, around the lads and training because they do work, work hard when it comes to training and they do put everything, but they'll not wreck your head about football and not, they'll not wreck your head about Monaghan and stuff like that. So that's what I enjoy about it. You're not coming back in and post-mortem and post-mortem the game with, with everybody. But it's a good crack. Do you, do you enjoy the... And I know people are always saying... Um, I remember, was it Eamon Fitzmaurice? He said a couple of years ago when he was in charge of Kerry, people were saying... Oh, the inter county game has gone so professional and it's so much time and it's a big commitment and all that. But Fitzy said that, um, he said, fellas, you asked them, they genuinely enjoy it. Like, they genuinely enjoyed the. Do you enjoy the whole build up, the start to the end? I know the last two seasons has been shorter and it's been very hard in terms of getting training and all that kind of crack. But do you like the commitment or do you think oh, it's a bit too much or no, it takes the amount of stuff you have to get through? You're going to have to put in that time. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I love it. There is times now when uh, I know when there's big stretches between games, you know, when it's constant training and stuff, it can be annoying. It can be, you just want to get, you just want to play games. You want to play in front of crowds. And as you said, the last two years has, has, has been affected. But I think it's, it's, it's near took this last two years for the GA to realize how they can shorten the season. And I know we're going into the split season now when, when it's January to July and then, uh, you know, with, it's going to be a lot more compact. There's not going to be a big stretch between games, and that's I think it, people will enjoy it a lot more when they're not away from their clubs for so so long. Um, but I I really do enjoy it. I enjoy you know the preparation that goes in. Like you see the amount of work that their management team put in to get you ready and the work that other players are doing away from it and stuff. And I really do enjoy it. Like I, you can talk to anyone. I I'm not I'm not the best when it comes to diets. I'm not the best when it comes to you know, training away, but I'll always, when it comes to training, I'll, I'll, I'll always put it in and um, I'll always make sure I'm well prepared for when championship comes, but um, I do really enjoy the commitment. I like being a part, because like, a good group of lads up in Monon, like a good good lads and uh, it's a good group to be around and uh, when you have that there, when you have good camaraderie in your team, you, you, you don't think about the sacrifice, you think about the, the crack and good memories to be made from it, like, you know. Ah, it's huge. Jeez, it's, it's huge. The crack, when you think back, and any time you meet up down the years, then you'll be talking about whatever you did, whatever, yeah. whatever wasn't recorded on phones or whatnot. Can I yeah. ask you a question, Rory? When, when you came in initially as goalie, was it, was it had the kind of transition to where goalies had to find their men already come in? Or were you still, like I remember Dearman Murphy when I was kind of finishing up with Kerry, Route one was kind of still the way, like where your half backs, your job on the kick out wasn't to be running around now, making space and creating space. It was to get under breaking ball and get under Dara or whoever we had outside there. Mm. When you came in initially, was that the way kick outs were being taken? In fairness, I came in in 2011 after the league. Um, I got a call from him and McEnany. Um, and I remember I was the, 20, uh, the 20, 21 skipper at the time and. Remember, Eamon was a big, uh, 
he wanted to talk, he wanted kick out starting to go to the wings and started to win more advantage ball and that's where I started that transition and again Steve Williams was a goalie coach at the time and he was uh, he's coming from a soccer background so he was teaching you how to maybe take steps off your kick and how to be more you know agile towards getting shorter ones away and stuff and that's where the, I found the tradition starting to happen uh, with us. And then, a f- funny, whenever Maliki came in in 2013, it wasn't a big... The way the kickouts, we progressed our kickouts was throughout the years. The first couple of years was a lot of 50-50s. We relied on big Owen Lennon maybe in midfield and breaking ball, the likes of Derby Malone and all getting in under that breaking ball and winning it. But then, obviously, as, as we as we found out, we, we were going to be sitting way behind the, the chasing pack. Uh you know, if we didn't adjust and didn't adapt. So it was something we worked on a lot from 2015. We worked on it a lot. Um, and you could see morning progression and our kickers getting a lot better and our strategies getting a lot better as then up till 2018 and stuff. Um, but I think, you know, up till 2018, no one really, no one really thought our kickers were as, didn't target us maybe as much. And then when 2018 came, I think a lot of that practice came, came to fruition. Like, you know, we were getting, games we're starting getting a lot of our attacks from our own kickouts and the players running was unbelievable i think the year pre after that teams had just had sourced that's morning's way of attacking and getting up the pitch for quite quick and they started to really aggressively uh press it and stuff and it took us a wee while to get used to it and then having to adapt again but um it's mad the amount of emphasis now that's going on kickouts and and all that it's 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 unbelievable like mm-hmm. even i'm coaching at under 15s at home and you near spend a lot of your training on kickouts like because they're going to happen 25 to 30 times a game. And if you're not working on them, you're going to be found out. Like It's, it's mad how much of a platform it is for teams for, for as an attacking platform. You see Kerry, how much they take joy off teams' kickouts at the moment. Like Donegal as well. Do you, do you have to, like, you, you sure you're the man in the, in the spotlight, like, do you have to be ready, like, and the team? It must take unbelievable organisation and unbelievable practice in mid-game. You might have to have, like, some team might press you, other team might drop off you, and you have to have different plays for different scenarios. Like, has it ta- does it take a team a long time to get used to exactly... I know you could guess how a team is going to, how a Tyrone is going to approach you or how a Galway will approach you or whatever, Kerry. Mm. But teams can change up in the middle of the thing and you have to be able to change with it. And just like that, you know what you're going to do. It, that takes an awful amount of time within a squad, doesn't it? It does. It does. And it, it, it has to be a big part of your training. Um, it has to be a big part of your training because, I said, it, it's not something that you train for that might not happen. It's going to happen a lot in a game. Like it, even pressing other teams' kickouts and stuff, there's so much work that goes into it. Um, but that's that's a lot of what we've built up since 2015 through all the work. And that doesn't go away from you. Like, it's... it's um, you, you, you always have that in your locker. It's just how you bring it, like how players make their runs. A lot of it is off the cuff because you can't call calls every time because teams will cop on. But you, you need to have a, a lot in your locker where players just make hard runs and it's up yeah. to you to find you. I've always said to the boys, that, you know, I'm only as good as you boys in front of me. You know, I can only I can only hit the places that are there and you have to create them for me. And in fairness, that, remember that year in 2018, the, the, the options they were giving me was, was unbelievable. And, Remember we played Kerry up in, in Clonus, and we, I always associate Kerry with a, with a press, like with a, they always target the opposition kickouts. Yeah. Remember the first half we were getting loads away, and, and not just chip out shorts, we were getting lots away to the wings, and but they had did a really big clamp on us the second half, and we didn't get that then many options. But um, it's something that we said we need to we need to uh, to fix because. You get a hold on teams at half time, that's one thing they're gonna be thinking of is how are we gonna we're gonna cap clamp this and then you need to that's when the calls maybe come in and you start to lose two or three, make a call, try and get a hundred percent possession and, and settle the settle the ship. But it does take a lot of work and training and a lot of t- uh, tuning in to be ready for it. Do you uh, do you do a lot of kicking on your own outside of what the inter county lads do? I did, I did, but I'm starting to get I'm getting older now. I'm hitting near 30 now. I'm, I'm just the right side of 30 at the minute, but um, I have I, I try to limit me tri- me kicking um, that I'm not kicking 50, 60 balls a night. You yeah. know, I've probably I've probably not done as much of me free taking now. I've never not practiced as much of me free taking now, um, and and I usually did. Like I would have been out on the pitch maybe once a week, 
uh, when I was younger, but now I just use them days as just recovery days, just sitting, you know, working or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, now I just attend to whenever they're asking me in to do kick out stuff or whatever, I save myself for that. But I wouldn't, compared to what I used to do when I was younger, I don't kick as much now because it does have an impact. Um, you know, the amount of times you're striking through and it does take a lot of uh, prehab work and stuff to get you ready for it. But, um, yeah, back then I, I used to need to kick 90, 100 balls of training and no problem to you. Yeah, just, yeah the groin wouldn't be one of good no. to get the to get the legs right for the next day. <laughs> That's what Darren Q says. Darren Q's used to take the freeze for us. And uh, he says now when he when he sets the ball down, he, he'd be free to pull the groin just trying to kick it like it's mad. <laughs> it's mad how he, he just it gave me the freeze when I come in then and he's looking after his body. Can I ask you there, what was going through your head? And forget the result for a second, the last day, I know, because it was one of the best displays I've ever seen. And people say, ah, oh, it is mad, a goalie coming out the field, it is mad, and this. And you look back in the game, and every single thing you did was relevant and contributed to Monaghan getting back into the game. But what was going through your head when you were chasing Donnelly back? Were you saying, Jesus Christ, it is what sticks it in the net, I'm in trouble here. I you, her, I, were you hoping like you were after coming all the way back and if I I've been in that position where I've got caught going forward and then I'm chasing my man and all you're hoping is that you'll be bailed out for some fella coming from this side to help you out but you went on your own yeah. and you're not a slow boy like I am slow I don't know where that came out of I do not know where that <laughs> pace came out of um, I remember I was standing out in the right wing and I know a couple, Niall Morgan had got a couple of kickouts out previous to that. I remember I was standing over on the Cusack side at the start of the second half, and no kickouts were coming out that way. So I said, right, I'm just going to adapt and go to that far side because that's where he was getting them. And it t- it had the wee bit. He was hitting a lot of 50-50s, but this time he got the boot right behind it. And <laughs> I was 10 yards. The kickout goes, and I goes, right, this might just get a punch on it in my direction. At least I'll get it, and then we can hit the field. And it flicked on. And I seen the boys, and I knew them boys were a lot more uh, tired than I was at that stage. So I just, I just went running, and I did, you don't believe it. I've seen the clip now there yesterday of it, um, and you don't realize how fast you're going at the time. But I remember looking up the clock, and it was 69th minute, and I goes here, this is game over if they get a score here. And I just went back, and I, luckily, I think he, he got a bad bounce to the ball, and I came up, and I it probably was a bit of a foul from what I done. I put the hand on his shoulder but I just got the a touch of the ball and it spilled and there was me trying to flick it up because I didn't I didn't I didn't see Darren McCurry coming at all. I met I'm just going off live play here. I didn't see it and it just last second when I flicked up there he was and I just had to re- instantly react it, bounce it and it luckily it came back into my hands and we got another attack then. But look, unfortunately we didn't get something on the end of it to, to, to equalise it but it was just it was just chaos in that last ten minutes. Like I was running, trying to contest kickouts and stuff like that. There, it was just trying to be as disruptive as I could to them. And you know, even after we got that way, the way after that attack, after that tackle, we blew up their kickout because he took too long, and we got another chance after it. Um, but at that moment in time, it was just get back and try and spoil it some way. And thankfully, it did. Now, now I know not everybody's an advocate of it, but. Um, you just have to chase it at that stage. I think it's huge with the the amount of work, as you said before, that's gone into kickouts and the amount of, of work that teams put into kickouts and then the movement. If it's man on man, they'll always find a pocket and they'll create a space and they'll just chip it into that pocket. So that you were filling that space as a goalie. And a lot of goalies, a lot of the top goalies, the Pattons and, and Kerry do it and Tyrone do it and you do it. Do you think it's something that teams will do a lot more of like? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because I know in the first half, Nan Morgan's doing it against us. Yeah. We probably went through a rough period in the first half in our own kickouts, and it, it's down to poor execution for myself, and maybe if you maybe not running as hard for it. And in fairness, we, we probably were a wee bit flat in the first half, and um, I know not getting our kickouts away might add to that as well. But I know Niall, he was standing in that exact pocket that I was in in the second half, and. It just plays on you like the players are thinking, do I run into this space? Is he going to be cutting this out? Is this a 2v1? I'm wasting my time running in here. and It just plays with you. And uh, I just said, look, if that's what happened to us in the first half, if that's part of what happened to our kick-out strategy in the first half, 
may as well just do it ourselves and and thankfully it worked for for parts and we got ourselves back into the game um and probably disappointed we maybe didn't push on when we got back to a level to level but look at it yeah it's all right now when you look back at it you, you could always pick out stuff what you've done wrong but um but that's that's football for you isn't it you didn't do you didn't do much wrong in, in that second half christ you were contesting midfield ball i was hoping to god that you would kick the the one you took on the run and I, I was saying he'll take it on the outside of the boot here now. But I've seen you doing it with club uh, a, co- a couple of times before. Is that stuff? Say you were very comfortable coming out with the, I'd say, more than any other goalie because other um, teams, I suppose, and players don't look as comfortable as you do coming out with the ball, right? But is that something you did with uh, with, with Scott Song? Yeah. Is that where it came uh, from? Uh, yeah, I actually done it more for Monaghan that year. Uh, in eighteen, I think it was against Kerry in the league. We went down to we went down to fourteen men, and uh, I pushed out to be that extra man. And what happened was Kerry obviously did, when they were man down, uh, when we were man down, I wasn't getting pressed for some reason. I don't know why because Kerry had a sweeper back or whatever. So I was on a lot of ball, and then I was sucking Kerry. Kerry were getting sucked out, and then we were getting balls flicked over the top. You're you're drawing a man to you, and that's what keepers want they just want to draw someone to release someone else we don't want to be doing all the kicking and scoring and stuff we just want to be a nuisance for the other team and, and other obstacles for the other team and um that's where it came from and you've i've taken a step too far as you know yourself to your own in 18 and stuff where you've tried to take on something that wasn't on and um there's times i got caught out in the league game one time in Scottsdale. i got a black card Um, i remember we were playing Tibbert and i kicked the ball across and it got fumbled and he was sprinting back, and I remember Conor McManus and Vinnie Corey were running with the ball, and there was Manzi Gatton, and I was in the 21, I goes, right, I'm just going to have to try and tackle him here. And, uh, I just took him, I just completely took him out of it, I got a black card, and, and thankfully the penalty rule wasn't in at that stage, but I have been caught at it, and people probably won't, won't remember that, because it was only a, a league game, and uh, no, not too many were at it and stuff, but thankfully it hasn't been really bad, we've been caught, lobbed, or anything like that there, um, that's the biggest fear, but been lucky enough so far it's worked okay but um i think it's going to get to a stage whenever you uh in the next couple of years where you're going to see it a lot more you're going to see a lot more scores yeah. from play from keepers and stuff i am um, i was just thinking there when you were saying you were down in killarney and you enjoyed do you enjoyed the crack you had to have do you know the way people say and i'd say all intercounty teams have it it, they do put a, they don't mind putting in the time they don't mind putting in the hours they don't mind putting in the hard training the sacrifices with family everything and there is a great social side of it, even now like you must have had a good group you were traveling you were successful you were winning ulsters you were um that time in division one all the time you were playing the big teams but you must have had good fun rory in the background as well i remember you, you came to to clarity one year you had a good old train trip up the country after did you the day after I don't think I was part of that team there. What? Uh, no? <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't think so now, Thomas. Uh, funny, after the Kerry games, oh, I haven't been a part of any of them, them ones. Uh, but we've had some We've had some really, really good good uh, nights. You know, it's funny people say, like, you know, you near have more crack when you lose than you do when you win. Yeah. We've had like we had great crack I last couple of so days. We lost plenty as well, like. But it yeah. is important, isn't it, to have like you talk about that bond and sure. I'm I'm pretty sure now a lot of those fellas will be very, very close friends to you. And you have to go through more than than training or whatnot. Like you're living in each other's pockets. Like I found out when I was playing that even when you were going off for a round of golf, you'd probably ring up one of the boys as well. Like you're in that there kind of Hmm. bubble for whatever amount of time you're in there like and then when I, I found when I walked away from it that yeah the, the brothers were there alright and you'd be daily contact with them like but the rest of it kind of just no some teams they work at it and they, they work hard at it like do you see yourself being tight forever with those fellas like do you see yourself being yeah some of those fellas are my best buddies like yeah absolutely Um, like as I said the last couple of days you know everybody stayed together and that's one thing we'd always say, like when you lose, stay together for a couple of days. Uh, but like that's not a problem. A lot of them lads would be close anyway before they even come in the panel through school and, and you know, school teams and stuff like that there. There'd be a lot of close groups in that in that in that squad. But um 
know, I've had some really, really good nights, you know, with that with that group of players after wins, after losses, you know, after leagues have finished and stuff like that. You have your best nights because everybody's just enjoying being there because they've all trained, played and, and it's just mad to get out and have a few, few have a few beers and enjoy yourselves and everybody's in the same happy boat and yeah, that's when everybody has a really enjoyable night then. You know, you after a couple of days, you park or whatever, or you're either going back to, to, to training or you're going back to your clubs and you know, when you're back in that club bubble you're 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 it's not that you're you stay distant from the lads, it's just you're not going out again because you're focusing then on your club and you may be away from them for a while. But you do, you'd meet up over Christmas, you'd meet a couple of them out or whatever and you'd enjoy a few or you as you said, you'd go golfing with a couple of them. Um but you'd always stay in touch. Uh, boys would be very close there. I thought this was in around a lot, but very one of the closest panels I've been involved with was these last couple of years. Um, you know, lads, just it's it's been very close, and I think that sort of uh, you get that bond through them nights out and stuff. You know, boys yeah. getting a wee bit more courageous to talk and stuff. <laughs> if you be yeah, the, the shy fellas come out of their skins a small bit more when they're out in the night out, and you 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 never hear anything out of them inside of training, but they'll come out with something. Management. Or is that something I know you've been involved in coaching? I know you you have a, a huge involvement in your own club of coaching. Do you see yourself getting him on in, in, into management at senior level, even at club level, county level? The time that goes in for whatever about players, the time that goes in for management is it's crazy, isn't it? It's huge the amount of actually effort that goes in from a management point of view. Like, yeah, oh, I definitely I see myself, you know, coaching well beyond when I retire. And I'd love to be involved in the senior team, um, just just to keep in with that near routine, that championship buzz and stuff like that. There, I'd love to, I'd love to be involved. Um, you know, I've coached, I've coached since I've, I've coached since I've been about twenty in the club and uh, throughout various teams and stuff. And I've learned from some great but player people coming through Monaghan. And I've learned from the coaching and games ones. And I've learned from from a lot of people who've played on there, and I take a lot of that sort of on board. But um, I love going back in and coaching in the club and just. The, the young lads how enthusiastic they are like we'd be quite we'd have quite a big population in Scottsdale and the numbers that you get out of training is great and um, you see some clubs on fit and they're amalgamating but Scottsdale like you know you know we get a bit of slagging because we're three clubs put together we were originally Scottsdale to the Abnett and uh, Nogger Tallinn but now it's just, yeah and it's just all together it's all together now people are all slaggish you are three clubs put together or whatever but um, it's great to see the numbers coming out and then boys coming through um, compared to a couple of years ago, there's not as many dropping out now, and they're they're continuing through on to. We've a team in in the junior league, and uh, we've a our second teams in the junior league, and then we've we've a, a B team, and then we have a now a D, junior D team. So we've four senior teams now going at the minute, yeah. and our ladies have two senior teams going at the minute. So you know it's all all healthy in Scotland at the minute, and and I think with the success of winning multiple senior championships over the last number of years, um. You can see the amount of hungry kids that are mad to play football now and, and mad to emulate that success when they get older. So that's that's why I love that's why I love uh, coaching and in the club and hopefully someday you'll go, you'll go in get into management if if you're good enough if I'm good enough. I suppose. Uh, what was I going to say? Did it say for the looking at Dublin and looking at Cluxton? Cluxton changed really the, the, geez, we played against him so many years now and we couldn't we found it hard enough to crack him some days you, you'd think you've cracked him in it and he was able to to change up the way he'd vary a kick out and it's phenomenal like the amount like I remember a lot of fellas as you said there somebody would say to you geez will you go and go there or whatever now they're putting fellas really really good kickers because kicking as well as saving is the most important thing for a goalie and be able to do it whatever, long, short, especially short under pressure. Do you think Dublin, at some stage this year, will miss Cluxon? At at, this is where it's going to be really key now. Like The teams that Dublin are going to be playing are going to put a real press on their kickouts. Yeah. I think I think you haven't seen the best of Stephen Cluxon most likely in the last number of years because teams have just sat off because they feel that's the best way of maybe containing the dubs. But I think you have to go at probably Evan Comerford now. I think he's a good keeper, Evan Comerford. I thought he slotted in really well. Um, I even watched him for TCU, and he's he's um, he's a very competent keeper, and I think he will slot in well. But you know, 
Cluxon's went, Cluxon probably when he first came in would have went through some bad periods as well. It's it's about nailing that there and putting him under pressure because if you can get a nail in their kick outs and it, taking the ball off them and possession off them at that time, I think Mayo are a squad who can do it. And if, say, Dublin get through Mayo, I think Kerry will get past her own and I think Kerry will really, really go to nail it. But funny when you get into Crook Park, how big it is like and how... Just Dublin are so well used to it, like the the way for it and stuff, and how wow. how mad they are in kickouts. But as I say, it it's all right having the man to kick them, but it's the players in front of you who who, who really make it. And Dublin have hard runners, like and they they will show for for for, for the kickouts. And I think Evan, um, if if anyway, if and if someone's going to topple Dublin, I think it's it's going to have to be targeting that that area. Yeah. What was I going to say? You've come across. I was going to ask you to name possibly the most dangerous men that you faced in terms of, of uh, that you'd have to put men on. Clifford would be an obvious fella. But even before you even come out of your own county, McManus has had some career, isn't he? he? In terms of, I would say, you always see what we see on television and what we see, but what you must see inside in training and what he's, his ability is, because you'd always see more. I always talk about Gooch and a lot of the stuff that he was doing inside in training was crazy. And some of that would come out, obviously, on the pitch as well. But McManus is probably, Rory, Jesus, he's an unbelievable kicker of the ball, isn't he? He's just a strike. That point he obviously got against Tyrone on the sideline will always be shown. But a phenomenal player for Monaghan. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's probably one of the best players we've played with. Um, and funny, when you're playing training games, like a lot of the time he'd be in the team opposite here, and so obviously he's in close with you and you get a really good, of his runs and stuff, how smart he is and how good of a ball winner he is. Like, and people like, People just associate him with scoring, like, but he does a lot more than that. Like, it's what he, the space he creates, and you know, um, just the uh, the leadership he does at times in games where he kicks a big score to uh, to just get the thing going again. Like, and he's been look, he's been an unbelievable servant for modern football, and um, he's he's like even that arm I game. You know, when the thing was in the metal pot, like people don't realise he won the two frees. He won them two frees that he yeah. kicked. Like, and I remember being up. I remember, I remember actually being a full forward the time he won the first free. I I wandered in the full forward at that stage. I remember <laughs> as you coming do, back right? out. Yeah, yeah, as you do. And uh, coming walking back out, and I says, "Do you want that free, or do you want me to take it, or everything goes no, no, I'm taking it." And this was just inside the forty-five at this stage, and he nailed it. And we won the next kick out. He won his free again. Out in a tough area, he'd been wrestled to the ground, intense heat, um, seven, 75 probably minutes played at this stage, and he slaps that over to, to win you the game. Like it was, um, that's one thing about him, like he always turned up in them clutch moments, like he's, yeah. he's, he was always there, and he, he always stood up and wanted to take that that free to win the game and stuff. And he always took a big scuff at the neck, in fairness to him, he's, he's been unbelievable for us. Like, I think the Vanty, Vanty started him at wing half back when he, when he came in. <laughs> Do you give Vanty a bit of a roasting over that? <laughs> oh, he's got a bit of roasting all right from it, from from Manzi in particular. But uh, uh, it's unbelievable uh, what he's done for Man in there. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Well, what you've all done for Man because I, I I find it phenomenal every year. One of the hardest teams to beat every single year. Teams will drop and teams will go down and teams will dip and you're there's something constant like. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to leave you with one last one. If you had to pick a winner for the All Ireland this year, who would you pick, Rory? I, I still find it very hard to pick it, to be honest with you, because I don't know, is it inbuilt in us with Tyrone that it would, it's not that there's a fear, but you, you can't, there, there isn't a full confidence that you'll fucking get over Tyrone. But you, 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 you said already you see T- Kerry and Tyrone, or sorry, Kerry and Dublin in a final. Do you reckon if Kerry get a hold of them this year? That they'd they'd beat them. I think so. Yeah, and that's this is the one year now, or really feel it. Um, and I'm not I'm not falling into that that area that Dublin mm. haven't performed. Dublin probably haven't needed to perform to that yeah. high level yet. But at the same time, it's very hard to switch on straight away, and they'll have a team in their face. And they are going to be in their faces going for this. Like, but I think I think I still think they're going to get by Bayo, and that will help them coming into the final. That will really set them up. But I think Kerry have been. I've been absolutely brilliant this year. You know, they just looked like a team who took that defeat really, really bad last year into Cork. And you know, just watching them, like people said, or slow against slow starting. I think it was against was it against Tip 
in, in Munster, but I've I've watched every single game because I love watching Kerry and um you know the David Clifford didn't score in that Munster final, am I right? He, he scored yeah, a point yeah. from a free and yeah. they still hit they still hit a really like this the other boys stood up, you know, the likes of uh you know, Sean O'Shea, who were an absolutely unbelievable football, Paul Ganey, who are I always thought he's been played out of position out in half forward, but he's been absolutely brilliant out there. Um, they have all these other boys standing up now, and they're not just relying on David Clifford. And you know, bad to be relying on maybe Clifford and O'Shea, two young boys on your team, but the rest of the boys are starting to step up now, and I think their defence has been absolutely brilliant too. Like people always talked about Kerry's defence as a way of getting at them, but they've been uh, they've been absolutely brilliant this year and conceding very little scores. And I just think that I think if Kerry could buy their yeah. own, I think. I think they will now, but I've been proven wrong before. There's something with that um, that Dublin team, like everybody's kind of saying that they're on the way, and then you look at McCarthy still flying it. Start, from from the start, he's been there, and he's the kind of engine, I think, of the outfield engine. Everybody talks about Cluxon, and Cluxon was absolutely huge. But McCarthy, what he does, and then they have Kilkenny and Khan, and they haven't sparked yet, and you're saying, yes, Fenton hasn't sparked yet, and you, if they get going... They are capable of bringing the other lads with it. It would be huge. I think the whole country would want to carry. No, not no disrespect to Tyrone or no disrespect to Mayo, but I don't know. Is it that the whole country thinks that Kerry are a team? And I think a lot of people in Kerry are still half worried because the only t- there's no team that have actually got over the line with them yet. So it's it's a huge mental thing. Um, the last very last question, or before I leave you go, do you know what was on your GPS after the game the last day? No. Uh, no, I haven't looked at anything from that game. No, I haven't. Uh, but I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. I'll, I'll be pally enough with the GPS man, so I might ask him. But uh, I haven't I haven't even looked back at any stats of the game. I'm just going based off what you have said. I'm going off literally what I remember from playing that game that yeah. time. I haven't watched it or anything, so I haven't haven't even looked at it. Now, I have been asked that question a number of times, but uh, I haven't haven't checked it up yet. But. I reckon it's up in the double digits anyway. You you ran more than... I, I enjoyed it. Now, and I know it is very hard when you lose a game like that. Um, so And I know it's very hard for you to even to come in and start talking about it tonight um, with me, but I really, really appreciate it, Rory. It's brilliant to see goalies being looked on as a lot more than just stopping balls, and, and you'd have a mm. huge, huge... Um, I suppose influence on how modern goalies are looked at um, and long may it continue because it adds so much more to the game so hopefully we'll see you for a good fo- a few more years at it Rory uh, thanks a million all the best with Scottstown for the year ahead I hope you have a great year and I know the Ulster Championship is big win your own patch at home but try to get into the Ulster Championship is huge for you as well um, yeah. I hope it goes brilliantly for you and all the best next year and I hope to to see you back in goal with, with Monaghan and out the field and catching ball with, with David Moore and the rest of them hopefully down the line <laughs> so thanks a million Rory for, for being on Coral at Moss in association with Airgrid and Berbua Spanakpa I'll talk to you soon thank you thanks for having me thanks again to our sponsor Airgrid proud supporters of the Airgrid under 20 All-Ireland Football Championship and leaders in Ireland's pursuit of a cleaner energy future don't forget to follow subscribe and review Gotta meet him again.